while there are other puzzle design tutorials out there, I wanted to give my own spin on the topic, especially for 4x4, since there are a few extra things that are very even cube specific that I haven't seen before in the tutorial, so I developed my own method for them. Just some background, I first watched Matt Barnard's tutorial and he used SOLIDWORKS as the design software, and he used a basic Rubik's brand 3x3 like mechanism as the example build, and that's how I designed my 5x5 and both of my 4x4s. And later I found NK Cube's tutorial and the design software he used was Onshape and he used a Wei Long style mechanism. So I will be using Onshape for this tutorial since I think it's a more accessible one of the two. So as with NK Cube's tutorial, two very important things you need to do is first you need to go to your account preferences in Onshape and, and customize your units to be millimeter for the length and degree for the angle. And after that you need to click on this plus symbol and click on add custom features and search Daisusa tools and then like you basically download the entire set which I'm not going to do here because I've done it already what we are going to do is we're going to generate a solid cube we're going to cut the cube in pieces so the first step is to click on polyhedron generator and you can generate like a cube and make the length 59 because that's how I like my 4x4s in modern day. And then of course select your origin point, which is the vertex of the or origin. Or the other way to do it uh, is just a sketch. Select the front plane and this is the much more manual way, but it works with SOLIDWORKS as well. So you can draw a square here. And make the sides 59 and the two sides have to be equal so you have to click on this line and click on a perpendicular line and use equal and you save the sketch and then you extrude you use this other function on top here known as extrude and then you, the depth is 59 and you want it to be symmetric so that's the cube next step is generate construction axis. This one is needed for later. So with the axis, we want the axis to go from the core to like out of every face of the cube. So for this, the axis length must be long enough. So I'm going to make it 40. The origin point, just select the origin and choose like two faces of the body and for polyhedron, you just click on your cube. And now you can see lines coming out from the cube. I'll start to do another sketch so for this sketch I'm also going to click on front plane and it's mostly for the proportions so I'm going to draw four lines because this is a 4x4 four four. and I'm going to click on this one and this other corner and then make them coincident and then do the same on the other side So the next thing I'm going to do is click on both of the outermost lines and make them equal and then I'm going to click both the innermost lines and make them equal as well. So this is a, this is a bit better than making all four equal directly because now you can control the outer and the inner layers independently of each other. So what I'm going to do next is use this dimension tool again and make the inner layer 14.5 which is the size of the Meilong's inner layer. The outer layer will default to 15 because I already made the cube 59 millimeters, so the numbers will always add up to 59. Okay. And then another thing is you have to click on all four of these lines and make them construction lines because you're not going to make them do any ac active action, they're just reference points. So actually this is the end of sketch 2, but I like to do two extra things. First to make a circle to represent the size of the cube. And we will need some space to design the alignment mechanism later, so what I'm going to do is make this circle 54. And you know, it's already construction, so I don't have to convert it. And I'm going to draw an, one extra line coming out from the center. This one is, this one is actually the angle of the corner stock, and it actually has a very specific value to it. The value is actually the tangent inverse of square root two. If you calculate it out, that's fifty four point seven three six. I actually learned this value from like NK Cube's tutorial. However, he glossed over it in his tutorial quite 
quickly. So I'm going to explain the calculation in slightly more detail. So imagine you have a cube where the length of the cube is 2. So center to edge is 1, edge to corner is 1. So using Pythagoras theorem, you can actually imagine this to be a triangle. And then calculate the length of from the center all the way to the corner, that's square root 2. Then now you add on a new line, which is from the core all the way up to the center, which is also 1 because that's half the cube's size. And using this 1 and this square root 2 that we have derived earlier, we can draw a new triangle. And the third line is basically the, from the core all the way to the corner. And if you want to calculate the, the angle of the corner, which is between these two lines, you can just do a bit of trigonometry and from there you will get this number. That's all to sketch too. I'm going to save the sketch and then I'm going to draw a new sketch. This is sketch 3. For this one, it's also another sketch on the front plane. So just choose front plane and now this is actual things that are going to cut the cube up. So first I'm going to draw one line that goes out of the cube. This is important because like, like we're actually drawing on the narrowest part of the mechanism. So the lines won't actually cut the cube if you just contain them inside. They need to come out with, and that's where it's mostly extended by straight lines on the outer parts of the mechanism. So the line just needs to be long enough but I like to make it 30. Then I'm going to add a small like extra sm line here for reasons that I'll explain later. And now I'm going to go and design the inside. So this one just go down like that. Then this is a center point arc. I'm going to draw this is the wing of the mechanism and then the center stock and then I'm going to draw two more arcs here this one will be the torpedo and then after that the core has to be hollow and there's, you need space to have a core so th that's the other arc here it will actually help you to hollow out the core then now I'm just going to use the dimension tool to make everything equal but first let me click on this line and click on this other line and make them parallel, you don't have to do this. Then after that, you can just dimension everything. You can actually adjust it by eye, but I personally like uh, exact numbers, so I'm going to use the dimension tool. I'm going to click on this point here and this line here, and then you can tell the length of the wing, and I, I'll just make it 10. And you can basically just dimension the rest of the points in a similar manner. So this one, 24. So that's sketch 3. So I'm, I'm going to start another sketch. This one is for the outer layer. And again, front plane. And I'm going to draw a line that comes out of the cube. Make it 30 as well. And yeah, I'm going to use the Aosu mechanism because that's what most cubes use. But with the original Aosu, it actually looks something more like that. But uh, most cubes don't feature that unless it's the GTS2 or the WRM. Uh, most cubes just directly go down like this and then feature a double anchor below. So since I already generated the, this line which represents the angle of the corner stock, I'm going to click on this line as well and make it parallel. And the benefit of generating this line early is I made it parallel to this other smaller line here as well. So now I have a parallel corner stock and a parallel um, like center stock as in for the hanging center, not the fixed internal center. Then of course, of course I can adjust the size. I'm going to make it like about this size. And of course adjust the other proportions. And then I'm just going to copy the outer sketch here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to spin the lines around the construction axis that we have made earlier. So okay, the planes are getting in the way, but you can just right click and hide all planes. The function we are going to use here is revolve. And then now that you can choose solid and surface, this time it's surface. And then edges or sketches to revolve, so we are going to choose sketch 3. I tried doing sketch 3 and sketch 4 together before at the same time but it didn't work and I also tried drawing the both inner and outer layers together in one single sketch as opposed to splitting them into sketch 3 and sketch 4 that also didn't work so yeah the approach is that I'm using is just to do it individually so I'm going to 
Yeah, click on revolve axis and then click on this line and now you have spun the internal line around this axis and yeah, I'm going to save this revolve command and I'm going to make a second command for revolve but this time I'm going to choose sketch 4 revolve around the same axis now I'm going to copy these two around all over the cube so for this the function that's going to be used is circular pattern and the entities of pattern this one it works when you click both of them at the same time and for the axis of pattern choose this top one and now it's copied everywhere but this is not enough this is a 4x4x1 four by four by not a 4x4x4 four by four by four. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the same method that NK cubes use which is transform and I'm going to click on one of these lines and make it a rotate as in I'm this one, but you actually only need one extra outer layer to cut off the top, and then like you don't need the bottom half of the cube because you only need to design one of every piece type, and then you can copy that afterwards, or you can just order like eight corners for example. You only need to design one corner. So I'm going to rotate this face by ninety degrees, and the axis that I'm going to rotate it in, just choose a perpendicular one. And another thing to do that is quite important is to click on the copy part so that you can keep the original part here and still cut it into a 4x4x1 and and then like the new copied out part will slice off the top layer from there you're going to use this other function multi-surface split and bodies to split just click on your cube entities to split with click every single line in this image and I'm going to click all the outer lines first and if you have not already noticed there are actually four inner lines here. However, like if you remember, I actually make that the sketch tree has have a very small line extending out on the top. This is to allow me to select them separately. Because what happens if I don't make that line and like they just appear? Let me delete. Yeah, if the two inner lines appear like one of these outer sketches like that, they will actually they will actually completely overlap with each other, and it will be quite annoying to separate them. Set like. Like click them individually but with that small extra line that I added it's actually quite fast to just click on them like that and from there I've, re I've really sliced out the top layer and you can actually look at some of the pieces so to look at a specific piece right click on the piece and hide other parts and then uh, you can see you can basically correct what is wrong around about the piece. For example, the corner stop is too wide, so I'm going to go with go back and edit an earlier sketch, which in this case is going to be sketch four. And now you can feel free to click and drag whichever feels like off. So you can also click on these numbers and change them if you want. But I'm not going to get another piece. Yep, this one looks quite good as well. So the final step is to delete all the parts that we don't need because we only need one of every piece type so for this delete parts and there are two ways to do this because there's a bunch of internal pieces inside so one way to do it which is the more efficient way and it minimizes the amount of commands you need to make is to mouse over every piece and like whenever it's a piece that you don't want you click on it but the easier way which is to make two delete commands is simply to click on all the extra external pieces that you don't want to use of course you need to yeah of course you need to be careful not to delete the original pieces that you want So we, we still kept our corner edge and center. And then after that, now the inner pieces are free for us to click and we can just delete them as well. Of course, we need to keep three of the internal pieces as well, which is the main center piece, then the small internal and the big internal. And the rest we just delete. And if you've done it correctly, you should have six pieces remaining, which are 
all six of the piece types of the 4x4. And yeah, I will, I will continue in the next video on how to do the alignment mechanism. <laughs>